My name is Mike Hall, and over the last 40 years, against better judgment, I've managed to amass over 400 classic cars. Under the Rocky Mountains of Canada, you have Tappan, also known as Rust Valley. This place is home to acres of rusted abandoned cars as far as the eye can see. It's also home to a shop run by a group of car enthusiasts that restore, trade, and sell classic vehicles. This team of enthusiasts goes by the name Rust Bros, and they were brought together due to the efforts of one individual, Mike Hall. Mike is a man that many people are curious about. Oh, you hungry? It's from yesterday. Yeah. It's good. Mm, mm, yummy. Yeah. The heat really did something to it. it helped cure it, I think. <laughs> He's an entrepreneur, a rust collector, and a hippie who loves cars more than money. But is that all there is to Mike? Join us as we reveal 10 things you didn't know about Mike Hall. Mike and the Rust Bros rose to popular acclaim due to the reality TV show Rust Valley Restores. The TV series is a Canadian documentary produced by Mayhem Entertainment for the History Channel in association with Chorus Entertainment. The show's premise focuses on the car community in the Rocky Mountains of Tappan, British Columbia. Each episode of the show focuses on the Rust Bros as they discuss the technical specifications of cars. It also serves as a learning ground for people looking to know more about classic cars. However, the show has grown to be loved by the viewers not just because it's educational, but also because of how the team transforms regular, old, boring cars into masterpieces. Before appearing in Rust Valley Restores, Mike appeared on an episode of another docu-series called Highway Through Hell. Unlike Rust Valley Restores, Highway Through Hell is a show that featured daring rescues of road accidents in the dangerous terrains of the British Columbia Mountains, especially the Kakihala Highway. The series is also a Canadian documentary, like Rust Valley Restores, and it follows the operations of a heavy vehicle rescue and recovery towing company based in British Columbia. Mike's nickname Rasta Blasta was derived from this period in his life when he was hanging off cliffs and blowing things up. But how did Mike go from starring in a reality TV show, rescuing people on the highways, to starring in another reality TV series and running a restoration shop? Keep watching and let's find out together. Any money he has is going to get sucked in and he will never see it again. Oh. Oh. Is that as hard as you can push it? Yeah, yeah. Just... Mike was born and raised in St. Boniface, Canada. He moved to Kamloops as a kid when his dad got a job with Canadian Pacific Railway. From his early childhood, Mike harbored an unwavering passion for cars that grew with each passing year. Old, classic cars had a special place in his heart, captivating his imagination, fueling his lifelong devotion. This profound affection for anything with four wheels would ultimately pave the way for his meteoric ascent as the prominent figurehead of Rust Valley Restores, establishing him as a major star in the automotive world. The story behind how Rust Valley Restores was born is very unusual because Mike never planned or intended to star in a TV show about car restoration. Well, the show's quite different from other similar car shows because it was not based on a garage or shop that was already restoring cars, but the shop Rust Bros was built for the show to exist. Mike built the shop on his rural property in 2018. The opportunity for the show presented itself when Mike found himself at the center of public attention when a story of him putting up five acres of land and more than 300 cars for sale went viral. Matt Shuchuk, a producer with Mayhem Entertainment, came across the news and came up with the idea to do a show about Mike's cars. Soon, Mike agreed with Mayhem Entertainment, and since its inception, the show has been a huge success with an excellent IMDb rating. Despite the success of the TV docuseries, Mike's car restoration business has not been profitable. The viewers liked the show, and while things looked to be going well on screen, the shop got off to a rocky start. After undertaking the first few projects, Mike's accountant broke the news about the shop only broke even on just two cars and lost a great deal of money on other projects. One significant loss was a 1963 convertible with a quoted price of $17,000. When Mike and Russ Bros were done with the car, the cost accrued was close to $50,000. That's an excess of $30,000 above budget. And while Mike's accountant saw it as a loss, Mike saw it as an investment. Not only that, but he also pointed out that despite the documentary series being a success, filming in the shop hasn't made him more productive and his business did not get any more lucrative. 
He further identified the inability of his team to distinguish between an estimate and a quote when dealing with customers as another major reason why the shop lost money. Well, Mike has identified all the reasons why the shop keeps losing money, but he fails to mention one major reason that has to do with him. Mike puts his heart into every project he embarks upon, which shows in the quality of work done by the Rust Bros. While this is a good thing for the customers, it's bad for the business's profitability because the shop doesn't get paid enough. Mike's fiery passion for his projects means he has trouble letting go. His son Connor has spoken about this trait several times on the show. He pointed out that Mike is so generous with his business dealings, it's a wonder how he's not broke yet. On several occasions, Mike has put a lot of money into projects, only to have trouble letting go when it's time to sell to a customer. Mike's best friend and second in command at the shop, Avery, has also complained about this trait, usually constantly hoping that Mike doesn't fall in love with the car they're working on. Mike's passion and trouble with letting go have led him to amass one of the biggest car collections in the world. He got his first car as a teen, and his love for cars led him to start collecting vintage cars. Over time, that collection grew to an astounding 500 cars. Mike has worked those cars to get them to their former glory. However, Mike abandoned his dream of restoring his large collection and sold off most of his collection till he had about 40 left. Mike sold about $250,000 to $260,000 worth of projects to people who could deal with them and kept some of his favorites. He kept all his 1970 Dodge Super Bs and some Chevys, including a 64 Malibu SS 4-speed convertible he's had for 30 years and a Buick GS 4-speed he's had for 40 years more. After his record sale, Mike revealed that his cars could finally fit perfectly in one yard for the first time. Mike's dream before he abandoned it was to make sure all his cars ran and drove again. As Mike got older, he understood that things won't go as smoothly as they did when he was younger. So he sold off his car collection mainly because he was running out of time trying to fix all of them. Mike sold off the collection with mixed feelings, but he knew he needed to let them go to people who would do something with them. Seeing as Mike sold off his car collection and has trouble keeping Rust Bros financially afloat, there is this popular misconception about Mike being a bad businessman. Sure, Mike's love for cars doesn't make him the ideal businessman in the car restoration business, but he used to run an entirely different business before he started fixing up cars. Mike owned a company that worked in the slope stabilization business, and most of his estimated net worth of $5 million was made while he owned that business. The name of the business is called Chimera Spring Rock Works. However, Rust Valley Restorers has made Mike an international TV star, not his slope stabilization business, but he still wants to sell it. Even now that most of his cars are gone, he's still looking for someone to buy his junkyards and tap in. Business isn't really booming in the area, and there's not a lot of money to be made by restoring rust buckets, so Mike is looking to sell up so he can enjoy his retirement. Away from all the rust and classic cars, Mike has a wife and a dog. They live on a 26-acre farm. Mike hardly talks about it, but it's the place where he doesn't have to worry about having too many cars on the property, because there isn't, and his wife won't let him. Mike keeps his rust buckets away from the farm to keep the missus happy. However, it wouldn't be wrong to say Mike derives true happiness from fixing cars and loves them more than anything else. It takes a great deal of passion to run an unprofitable business. Rust Valley Resource is a great show, and we hope for the sake of the viewers that it continues to air.